Okay, wait, welcome to lecture two, week two of the Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics course. Uh, as usual, if you, you don't hear me or there's some problems with what you see on the screen, do type quickly in the chat so that we can fix it before too long. And as usual, I will upload the videos during the evening so that they are also available for later checking if there's something you didn't quite get. But uh, do ask questions while it's going on anyway. So the topic of today, as mentioned here for lecture 2.2, is first order logic. And we will treat that as yet another domain specific language, extending the language from last lecture on propositional logic calculus. Uh, now we have first order logic. And I will um, do this in a Jamboard. So let's move over to the Jamboard. So um, let's see if I have pen active. On the left of the screen here is what we talked about on Tuesday. So prop is the data type or the domain of uh, logic expressions, which only sort of they have names and combinators, but there is no nothing to talk about. It has only logic. So it's and, or, implication, not, false, true, and named um, logical expressions uh, at the leaves. And now uh, on the right hand side is the first order logic. So in some slides before I've had the right hand side for semantics and the left hand side for syntax, but here it's, it's, um, it's not that case. So this is prop uh, the syntax and semantics of prop, and then we extend it to the syntax and semantics of the first order logic. Uh, so the two extensions needed to go from uh, the propositional calculus to first order logic are predicates and quantifiers. And quantifiers are what you've recognized in many places, the for all and exists. And the predicates, they are um, claims that may or not be true of something. So they have arguments. Can you share the Jamboard link? Um, yes, I can share the link in the chat as well. It's also on Canvas, I hope. Um, hopefully, uh, let's see, uh, somebody said that it's not open so then i should check if it's the settings are not okay copy link no change to anyone with a link okay sorry for that uh, anyway you could see it on screen i hope so far uh, now it should be possible to also enter it so the access denied is now hopefully not anymore because i see lots of anonymous people are entering Good, thanks for pointing that out. So as usual, uh, I will move on to different sort of slides in this uh, Jamboard, uh, but you can go back and forth so you can see what I said on the previous one. Um, so anyway, first order logic, adding uh, predicates, and I said over some domain, and we will expand on that quite a bit, but Generally speaking, first order logic is generic or parametric over which domain it should discuss. So it's, it's one specific domain instance in each case, but it's the description of it is generic, it works for all kinds of domains, but you can only have one at a time. So let's move to the next page. Um, and now I will focus on the predicates. So the, what I said just very recently on the previous uh, a minute ago was that actually there is a parameter to first order logic, which is some domain. And uh, we will look here at two example domains, the domains of numbers, it's a bit vague, uh, and the domain of family, uh, which is also a little bit vague, but I'll try to give them as, as examples. And uh, what I'm trying to illustrate first is that in the propositional calculus, in the leaves of the logic, we have a constructor of the data type called name, and then a string representing the name of some 
underlying logic. Uh, now that constructor name will be extended to have two arguments. So instead of name, we call it pred for predicate. It still has the string here, the same as before, but that string can have zero or more arguments. And here is where I use the parameter. So first of the logic over the domain DOM, and then the pred constructor has a list of DOM expressions. And we will see examples below. But first just say that to remember that all the other constructors from propositional calculus, false, true, not, implies, or, and, and, they are kept the same. So we can still write expressions an expression tree in logic, and at the leaves, we now have these predicates. Okay, examples of predicates, typical things we might use in mathematics uh, in the numbers doma uh, domain here. So that could be prime. So prime is a predicate with one argument, some number n. Uh, less than could be a predicate with two arguments, a and b, usually written as infix a and less than b, and divides a and b, that a divides b, that a is a factor in b, if we're talking about whole numbers, which of course, if we're talking about prime numbers, divides is also an important predicate. So these are examples of predicates we might have. And as usual, um, when we define a syntax for a domain-specific language, a priori, so before we sort of define the semantics, these are just syntactic expressions. They don't necessarily mean anything useful. So prime here, less and so on, they are assigned meaning by some translation later, some semantic translation to some particular semantic domain. But syntactically, we have the name of a predicate and we have some arguments, well, one, to, to, it could also be zero arguments. And just to, to make it not too specific to numbers, we can also think about family relations. So a binary predicate, if we have, instead of DOM, uh, instead of having numbers as the DOM, if we have family as the domain here, or maybe persons, then we could have predicates like child of, saying that C is the child of a parent P. And maybe also predicates like x is male, and so on. And given these, we can define the you know grandchildren or parent or a, a grandfather. Uh, these kinds of predicates, uh, recursive uh, or not recursive definitions, using these base predicates. So that's an example of another domain. But usually, uh, or, or always, then the first order logic itself is over one particular domain at a time. So we do not have prime and child of in the same domain normally. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Um, so I said we, we keep the logic the same, we said here, and then we now talked about predicates. Now let's see what the quantifiers and exemplify them. So for the one here, uh, it's an example expression uh, with of a first order logic, um, well, claim, which may or may not be true in this particular domain of the family. So it says that for all x, which are then elements of the domain, so it's not logic x, x is a family member. It says here that for all x, there exists a y, so that x is the child of this y. And maybe you could say that that makes sense. There is always, everybody has a parent. Um, they may be dead and so on. But then if you actually implement it in a computer, say a, a genealogy, so a family tree, that family tree will be finite. So I, it's unlikely that this claim is actually true for a particular database of, of, family, of, of a family tree, that for all X, that is actually is a parent. 
somewhere we sort of run out of steam and don't dig deeper into history. So there is some uh, great great grandmother who doesn't have a parent in it. So this this claim is probably for any particular implementation of a family tree false, but still it is a logical statement which is uh, well formed in the first order logic of a family's domain. Okay, and another uh, more mathematical example, fall two uh, says that for all n, if n is prime, so be using the prime predicate on the left hand side of an implication that's re usually read as if then. So if n is prime, then there should exist an s which is greater than n and also prime. So this is a claim about numbers, which before we've implemented it, we can't really say if it's true or not, but if it's the usual mathematical meaning of whole numbers and so on, then it's actually is true. Are the dots Haskell syntax? So no, uh, these expressions here are mathematical expressions from say a logic book. Uh, they are not Haskell expressions. For the Haskell expressions, which will come later, we will actually have to use uh, constructor names. So the for all will be probably F-O-R-A-L-L -L and so on. And, and the dot will not be uh, um, visible in the abstract syntax. So this is concrete syntax and it cannot be written in Haskell as such. But it's, uh, it's the usual, it's a bit like what we did with the complex numbers, we're trying to look at what this syntax is in the math book and make sense of it, and then see how we can model it. But it's a good question. So uh, while we could also use for all and exist with Unicode syntax in Haskell, I will not do that. I will actually write for all with normal text. Okay, so now let's do some um, type checking of these expressions. This is towards making a data type for it and encoding it in Haskell. So I've used green and red to separate here two different levels. So this expression about being a child of somebody, it has a variable X and a variable Y, and those are, are of type DOM, where DOM is family. They are domain variables. So X could be instantiated to a person and you can wonder, okay, but what else could it be? Well, it cannot be a number. It cannot be a logical statement itself. So this is not quantifying over predicates. It quantifies over uh, elements of your domain. Uh, and they are used here, X and Y, as argument to the predicate child of, the two argument child, uh, predicate child of. And child of, and this whole expression is a first order logic expression, but child of X and Y already is a first order logic expression. So that means that if you want to type the predicate child of, well, it should take two domain um, expressions and present a full expression, so a first order logic expression. So there is sort of two different data types being defined here. So in, when we want to code this up in Haskell later, we will have to give done data type declaration for DOM and another data type declaration for fall. But the first order logic data type will have to have internally in it references to DOM, but not the other way around. We'll see the example then. Similarly, prime also takes a domain variable n green here and produces a red first order logic expression. So the expression prime of n is a, is a logic expression, something which can be true or false for a particular n. Similarly here, we use the green stuff in uh, expressions. I mean, if we quantify over the variable, domain variable s, we use n and s in the less than predicate. I've sort of used the infix notation here for convenience. But as soon as we've done that, we're in first order logic. So the and here combines two first order logic expressions, n less than s and prime s. 
And um, this, this is, again, still not Haskell syntax. It's just uh, mathematics or logic syntax. But you can see here that, that the type of less than takes a DOM and a DOM to a fall value. I being a little bit uh, sloppy here about, is this a pair or, or two arguments? But the, the main key I want to point out here is that there are sort of the green world and the red world, the green domain world and the red first order logic world. And they'd be embed the domain into the logic using the predicates. Okay, so now we get to uh, attempt at writing Haskell on a slide. So sorry for the um, sloppy or, or the bad handwriting here. Okay, the question on the uh, chat is what world are the quantifiers in? Well, the quantifiers are logic quantifiers and fall yes is a type. So now we're getting to, to the, the encoding of first order, order logic in Haskell. So now we got the first data type declaration up here. Uh, so the data type declaration of fall has a number of constructors for the logic part. So we have and, we have or, we have implies, we have not. I've just written dot, dot, dot here because as I said, they're the same as we had previous lecture on, on the uh, calculus of propositions. And then we have these two quantifiers for all and exists. And notice here that I'm saying the first argument to for all is a domain variable, so something underlined by green. And then there is a first order, first order logic expression, which I'm quantifying over. So maybe I should briefly uh, flip back here to see that um, when I'm using for all, so example down here, so for all n, the n is a, uh, the first argument to for all before the dots. And then the whole rest of this expression is a second argument. The syntax tree of the, uh, this is the second argument to for all. Okay, back here. So for all and exist, take a, a variable in, in the domain and a first order logic expression and make up a new first order logic expression. So this is the body, you could say, of the for all, and this is the whole for all expression. And exist is very similar. And then finally, we got the pred constructor, which builds predicate expressions. You apply a predicate with a certain name to a list of domain expressions. And that whole thing is the first order logic expression. So, um, now to be a little concrete, I had the green underlines. Here is an example of a domain. This is a, uh, a numbers domain then. Okay, well, let's question in the chat. Does the constructor name, name to fall exist here or is it completely replaced by pred? It is completely replaced by pred. So the name constructor you could say is the, the special case of pred when this list is empty. So if you have a predicate which doesn't have any arguments at all, that is the natural generalization of the name uh, for a logical expression from the, the propositional calculus. Good question. So prop, uh, the name constructor from prop is replaced by pred where the second argument is the empty list. But fortunately, it can also have a non-empty list, which means we can do a lot more than we could in the propositions part. Okay, but anyway, this example of DOM, it probably should say instead of DOM uh, numbers, but it was a little long to write. So I just written DOM here. So it has variables. So those are basically strings, but it's a, I, I'd use the type DVAR here to show it's the same quantification over DVARs as in the first order logic type. And then, so that the var, var constructor takes the name of a variable and, and creates a DOM expression. So this is a syntactic expression again. Then we got addition, multiplication, and a way of embedding natural numbers. So this is not part of the definition of what first order logic is. So this is an example. This is just one example of a domain you can do first order logic on. So 
this slide describes first order logic on this specific data type DOM. So if you would replace, if you would keep everything black the same, but you would replace the domain, it would still be first order logic, but in other instance, the first order logic over family members, for example, as we had on, on the previous slide. Okay, and if we draw a syntax tree, remember syntax trees are usually drawn upside down to normal trees in nature. So this is the root of the tree up here, and then it sort of branches out in different directions. And the black part here is the logic expression. So there are constructors like for all and not exists and so on. And then further down comes green expressions, which are in the in the domain we're talking about. So I got two very small triangles here. They are maybe just a variable, but this is a little bit larger expression. So that might be the addition of the multiplication of some variable with some constant, for example. So I'm, I'm drawing a blue line here and it's this is above and this is below to also indicate here that there is a part above which is logic and then below there is just the domain. And notice that even though the first order logic mentions the domain in several places, the domain never mentions the logic. So these two are not mutually recursive. The first order logic type can be reused with another domain. It mentions the domain, but the domain does not mention the logic. Okay, the question from the chat, it requires a language extension to write data constructors using type signals like that in Haskell, right? Yes, so I'm, I'm using this notation with a where clause and then listing the constructors with their types, because I think it's more readable. Uh, that syntax is part of an extension called GADTs. So uh, GADTs which um, is formally an extension of the standard uh, Haskell from the beginning, and it can be used for very advanced stuff, but I'm not using it for anything advanced here. Um, so uh, it's generalized algebraic data types. That's the name, generalized algebraic, uh, algebraic data types. Anyway. So that extension that somebody put in the chat, language extension GADTs is needed at the top of the file to load this definition. And that there are several examples of it already in the, the different live coding sessions we had before. Um, I don't know what's being added to Rust right now. Somebody else needs to answer that question. Okay, let's move to one more slide forward. Um, so just as a little bit of an exercise here, let's try to add the types for another first order logic expression. So this is the claim that addition is commutative. So it says that for all X and Y, X plus Y should be equal to Y plus X. And I said, because we know the for all quantifier requires a first order logic expression as its second argument, that's why I've said that this fall here is red, or this, this expression here is red. But then the question is, so, so with, with, and this means that the equality, or maybe I should draw the tree here first. So we got inequality, and then we got an addition, and then we got the variable x, y, we got an addition, and they got y, x. So this is the syntax tree here. Um, but what are the types? What should I fill in in these six boxes among the uh, function arrows? So let's, let's be concrete and say that we do know that at the top level up here, the equality needs to be a first order logic expression. So this is decided already by the for all outside it if we do type checking here. Then is the question, if you have suggestions, what should be written here and here? DOM and DOM, yes. So these are two domain expressions that are compared for equality. 
So this means, which is not visible from the syntax, that equality here is actually a predicate. Um, okay, what about the type of plus then? What should be written in this box to start with? Yeah, okay, dom, dom, dom. <laughs> so to start with, uh, as the input to equality is a domain expression, this has to be a domain expression. And the variables are domain variables, so they are also domain expressions. So we got three cases of DOM here. So generally speaking, you can have a big expression in the domain, and then at some point it switches over using a predicate to the logic, and then everything above is logic. So this syntax tree I drawn on the right here, um, it's a syntax tree of the red part marked here. But above that in the syntax tree is also two for all constructors. So maybe if I try to, let's see, maybe I should make a, a little extension here. So this is, this is gonna be a very strange leaning tree, but it's for all X and then it's for all Y and then it's that expression. I'm trying now suddenly to make arrows in, instead of these. So just, just for symmetry, let's continue with arrows then. So for all x, for all y, equality of x plus y and y plus x, that's a syntax tree uh, with here, uh, to make it short on the slide, written with a sort of math mathematical or logical notation uh, instead of um, the constructors. But here is an example of a part of this expression, the red part, or I mean, uh, now the red part is, is ambiguous, but this part, the first of the logic part. So the predicate equality is applied to a list of two arguments, add X and Y and add Y and X. And what are X and Y? Well, X is actually a variable uh, with a string X and Y is a variable with a string Y. And this is connecting back to the data type of the domain on the previous slide, where I had uh, the variable case, the add and the mull uh, constructors. Okay. So one more uh, example. So uh, in addition to this notation, there is usually, it's very common to use typed quantifiers. So notice before, um, it just said for all x dot and then some first order logic expression, let's just call it P. And now here I've written for all x colon A. And the meaning of that uh, using some syntactic sugar, very common in logic. Uh, well, syntactic sugar by itself means can be translated away. So if I write for all x colon A, it really means for all X without a type, and then a requirement that X satisfy the predicate A. And if that's the case, then B should hold. So it's a restricted quantifier. So it quantifies over all values and then puts in a restriction. So similarly, I can say there exists an X of type A such that B of X holds. And that is similarly untranslated, but it's not the same logic combinator here. So it says there exists an X such that both A holds and B holds. Could you give an example? Yes. Uh, so I think I will do that exactly on the next slide. Yes, or at least I will, I will use it on the next slide. But okay, let's, let's make an example already on this slide. So, um, if I want to quantify, we have, say, the quantification for all x of type, well, yeah, we'll, we'll use that example. So for all x of type n, um, I will claim that prime x. So this is a first order logic expression. It's not true, but it's a claim. 
And if it's the logic we had on the, uh, the previous slide, uh, or the domain we have this with all integers, then x colon n here is actually a restriction. It's not all the values uh, in the domain. It's only the values which are natural numbers, so zero or, or above. So this is then translated using a predicate that checks that x is actually greater than or equal to zero. So this, this would have the same meaning, this whole quantification, as the implication that x is greater than zero. If x is greater than zero, then x is prime. So if I write it out, this is the same as for all x without any limit, uh, x greater than or equal to zero implies prime x. So that's an example. So anywhere you see this uh, quantify uh, this type quantifier, it really means that there is a restriction of the of the domain in some sense. Okay, uh, now let's uh, say something. Okay, so this would be true if x is not natural. Uh, I'd not. Maybe I should go back again here and see what what the question means. Um, Well, I mean, uh, the, yes, okay. Uh, I, I think I understand the question. So this part of the claim, x greater than or equal to zero implies prime of x. That is true for x equal minus one. So that claim is true for x equals one, but for all x here would require that it not only hold for x equal to minus one, but it should hold for all x, including all the positive ones. And there we're not helped by the left-hand side. But yes, it's true that the predicate um, with an open variable x here, uh, that will make, that, that will be true for all negative x. It's true that if x is greater than or equal to zero, then x is prime is true for all negative x. Uh, it's not true for very many positive x though. How is the dot used here? Well, the dot is a, a common notation to sort of just distinguish the where the for all ends and where the predicate starts. So the syntax here is actually a dist fix syntax. So the two symbols for all and dot with a variable name in between and the predicate afterwards, that is the constructor, that translated to the constructor for all in the other syntax. So the for all, a variable and a predicate, it just has uh, these two sort of subtrees or you if you want so the for all symbol and dot symbol are part of the of the surface syntax okay um okay negation then what happens if we try to negate a quantified expression so now we're back to untyped quantification sort of the usual built-in quantification and these are the so-called de morgan laws uh, on the right hand side are the ones you've probably seen lots before. Um, so not of and is or of not. So if you push the and inside, and if you push the not inside of the and, then you get not A and not B, but you get an or between them. Similarly, if you push not inside an or below the line here, then it's uh, the same as not A and not B. If we generalize that, we go to the left-hand side. So for all is a generalization of and. So for all x means P of x0, P of x1, P of x2, and so on, for all, uh, all values of the domain. So it's a very, very, very big quantification, uh, usually an infinite quantification. It is an infinite and, you could say. But the same kind of rule applies here. So if you negate a for all quantifier, it's the same as negating the internals and then having changed the for all quantifier to exist. So the change from for all to exist is a generalization of the change of and to or. So it's an enough to prove 
if you want to prove that something is not always the case, it's enough that there exists one example X such that the opposite holds. So here P is a, a logic expression which usually would use X somewhere. What is the meaning of equals with three bars? Yeah, equivalent to, so semantically equal. So uh, the result you would get uh, by instantiate everything in the expression to some truth value on with the right hand side would be the same as the, you would get on the right hand side. So it's it's not quite the definition uh, because this is a, a perfectly fine syntax tree for a first order logic expression. This is also that. I'm not defining by, by um, uh, in this case, uh, by syntactic sugar, what not should be doing, but you can, it's actually one of the exercises is to implement it, to do this syntactic transformation, but it's a property of the logic that um, for all exists and not are related in this way. And it's symmetric. So if you do not of the exists, you get the for all not. So pushing, not inside and exists makes it a for all and negates the internals. And that is exact, exactly the same symmetry there that this exists is like a very big or. Exists an X that says that, well, either X holds for some A1 or some A2 or some A3. If you can enumerate all the values in the domain, then this, this Q is, this, this expression here is sort of equal to Q where X equals A zero or Q where X equals A one or Q where X equals A two or, and so on. So this is assuming, uh, so now I am extending here on the right hand side, maybe I shouldn't, but this is probably good to be extra clear on where um a1 a a0 a1 a2 and so on are in the domain so if we uh, look at if we have this kind of fear in um meaning for it or intention with the exists then we can see that of course pushing the pushing the not inside this big or expression will give us lots of not with and, and that's the meaning of the for all. So that means uh, to prove that it doesn't exist is a strong requirement. We have to prove something for all X that this is negated. And uh, a good little exercise is to try to push the not through the syntactic sugar of typed quantification. So if you have a not of a for all x colon a using the implication and so on, then you should get the same kind of translation that the not ends up at the, the b. And it's not obvious because if you remember, there was a translation step there with an implication sign and so on, but it does work out. I should mention here that I'm a bit willy-nilly using the same symbol A or P or Q, the logic symbol, in three different ways. So uh, the three different ways are illustrated down here on the right. So the, the, in the notation with type quantification, when it says S, X colon A, I was saying, okay, for all X of type A. So then I'm using a predicate or, or a logic expression as a type. And the intended meaning there is for all x which are which, which satisfy that predicate, which which uh, are um, so. For example, if a is prime of x or something like that, then then uh, this is the type of all prime numbers. We can't define it in Haskell, but it's uh, mathematically speaking, we can have types which have arbitrary uh, restrictions. So this is one reading of it: x colon a when A is a type. Uh, another notation, so the has LM uh, or LM notation, X is in A, is when we treat A as a set. So a type is 
basically the same as a set, a little bit different uh, underlying fundamentals, but the idea of a set is the set of all values of the type. So X being in the set A is roughly the same thing. And if you remember the, the notation we used when, it, when um, defining the syntactic sugar here, we used the type applied to X. So this notation. So here we suddenly use A as a predicate. So you can't really mix this. I mean, if, if you really want to code it up in Haskell, you will have to decide on one or the other. So this is one of the examples where the mathematical notation takes uh, some leverage when it comes to the exact correctness and so on. So you have to know from the context which of these uses it has. If A is actually a type or a set or a predicate. So that's a bit unfortunate. And, and we, we run into the problem sometimes, for example, with primes. It would very, be very convenient in Haskell to have a data type of primes. Uh, but we, we can't really, with the syntactic discipline of data types, define a prime as a data type. We can define a new type, which we call primes. And then it's up to us to make sure that the values in it are only primes. Uh, but we will not get direct help from the system to prove it. I should also mention that there are systems like Agda and Koch and Lean and the different provers, Isabel Hall and so on, uh, which can have the types which are more advanced things like prime or, or almost any expression, logic uh, expression you can think of can be encoded as a type. Uh, that has a certain cost, and the reason Haskell has not gone for it is that then you, you, the type system becomes much more complicated and uh, undecidable. Um, anyway, what we've tried to push on this final slide uh, of uh, this first half of the lecture is that the De Morgan translation, uh, where you can push in a not through an AND, can be extended to for all quantifiers. And this is something you can use as an algebraic rule when you simplify logic expressions. But I, I really encourage you to work a little bit with this and try to apply it, generate in your head or on paper some example uh, and examples and try to figure out what they actually mean. Because it is a little tricky, especially in the corner cases. So imagine, for example, that the domain is empty. So we have something like this for all x, b. If the a here, for all x of type a, if a is a predicate which is never true, uh, then this will be, the whole quantification will be true because for all something impossible, something should hold, that is true. Okay, the, the question in the chat. In the exercise, are we meant to implement it for a full or just for the prop type? So in the exercise, meaning assignment one due next uh, week, uh, I assume that's a question, uh, there it is um, first order logic over the domain of pure set theory. So the, 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 the props uh, defined there are basically propositions over um, set theory, but the, the, there are no use of the for all quantifier and existence quantifier. Uh, okay, I think he's meaning the exercise by tomorrow. Okay, so that's another question. Okay, so the bonus points here, uh, pushing the, the not through uh, the, the implement of the Morgan dualization. I don't remember now if it, mentioned, if it was in the prop section or in the first of the logic session, section. It's not very different, uh, so do either. But it's, I think it's a good exercise to do it syntactically. So meaning implementing the function which takes a syntax tree of a first order logic or prop and uh, changes it to a new syntax tree, just like uh, the kind of simplifications you do algebraically with mathematical expressions. Okay, so it's, and it's under prop, which means the exercise is formally about uh, the prop data type. So it's slightly simple, it doesn't contain this negation example, uh, but it's a rather small extension to do it for that one. So you can do it as you want. Um, in well, okay. So when it comes to what to do for implies, you can you can have a choice there. I mean, you you can either translate um, 
implication to uh, with a sort of classical logic interpretation of with the or and not. But uh, when you get to uh, to the leaves, like the constants, that is not difficult. So I mean, if, if you negate true, you get false. If you negate false, you get true. So uh, the constants are not a problem. But I think we now reached the time for the break. So let's have a 15 minute break and then continue afterwards. <laughs> 